Mrs. Anasri, please be my guest. Thank you. I'm the moderator of today's webinar, so I'll be conducting the presentation and discussion session. The webinar will last for maximum one hour and 30 minutes. The schedule of today's webinar is first is keynote speaker's presentation, which will last for 30 minutes. Question and answer sessions will go for 45 minutes. Before we start the presentation, I would like to inform the rules of the webinar. Okay, first one. All the panelists and the participants will be muted during the presentation. Secondly, there will be a question answer session after keynote speaker finishes his presentation. For panelists and participants, please click the raise hand button if you have anything to ask or suggest to the keynote speaker. Fourthly, the moderator has the authority to choose who will deliver the question answer session as well as suggestions. And now, let me introduce you all today's keynote speaker. Firdos Ahmad Malik, he is an Indian citizen by birth, is a full-time PhD fellow at Baba Sahib Bhimrao Ambedkar University, Lucknow. His area, uh, research interest areas include financial behavior of the poorest of the poor, financial inclusion, and financial literacy. He pursued his bachelor and master's degree at University of Kashmir, India, gained his MPhil, at Baba Sahib Bhimra Ambedkar University, Lucknow, and currently he is pers uh, pursuing his PhD from same uh, university. He has participated in many international conferences, workshops, and seminars since 2015, and his research interests are economic development, microfinance, financial inclusion, public finance, poverty issues, and social and economic policies. Uh, Mr. Firdos Malik, you may start your presentation now. Firdos, can you start? Yes, very good morning to all of you. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Give me a moment. A very good morning to all of the panelists and the you know participants from across the globe. So it is my you know honor that AIBPM has given me an opportunity to express my views on the you know current talk, which is COVID-19 challenges on financial inclusion of the poorest of the poor. It is a city of slums and beggars in India. So let me ask you one thing: Am I audible to everyone? Hello. Yes, we are here. Yes, yes, we can hear you very much. Yes. Yeah, we can hear you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So, <clears throat> the contents of talk will be, I will first briefly, you know, discuss about COVID challenge crisis in Indian economy and then glimpses of poverty, what is happening to the poverty in India. Then I will focus on the, you know, said topic, which is, you know, challenges of financial inclusion with respect to poorest of the poor. And I will mostly talk about two poor urban groups, which are slums and beggars. I will first discuss their socio-economic conditions with respect to two different cities, that is Lucknow and Calcutta. Then I will, you know, show some statistics based on chi square test, what are were the hypothesis and what are the, you know, interpretation of these hypotheses. Then I will discuss the main, you know, fundamental variables which are responsible uh, for the development or well-being of the socio-economic status of the, you know, poorest of the people. Then I will discuss two regression models and financial literacy indexes. So let me begin with this COVID-19 crisis. You know, actually, Indian economy is a labor-abundant economy where mostly, you know, it is a labor industry where millions of people every year join the labor industry in the country. India is actually a ruler-based economy where 70% people are living in rural areas. 
Due to COVID-19, the labor migration, which was forced, you know, running from rural areas to urban areas, now it has, you know, done a reverse. There was, there is a reverse that people from urban areas have, you know, shifted back to rural areas, which increases the challenges for the earnings and earnings of their life. So the migratory labor has shifted from rural areas, from urban areas, to back to the rural areas. which has made so many people unemployed in the country so actually the gdp indian gdp growth which is you know going to decline and recently uh, yesterday the rbi governor told it may you know touch the negative figures so therefore the country is cry in you know huge crisis due to covid pandemic and the international labor organization recently you know gave one and this forecasting prediction that in across the globe there may be 25 million people unemployed due to this pandemic and with respect to india there will be almost you know 400 uh, 190 million people who will lose their job due to this pandemic so keeping view on this now let us you know talk about the miseries what happened during this pandemic to the labor force to the poor in india poor people have you know lost their earnings they have lost their income and there have you know happened across the whole country some accidents in which you know poor people have lost their lives in accidents in train accidents and some got injured and there are you know there has you know occurred so many you know problems uh, with regarding to health people have lost their savings people are dying hungry and people are you know dying on road so <clears throat> now the question is who are the poor and why poverty persists in india as india country is you know of the age from 1947 india got its independence from then india is you know struggling with the poverty all the globe is you know struggling with the poverty but india has its experience of poverty since 1947 now there arises a question who are the poor and why poverty still you know persists there is a professor you know great sayings of professor binod nayak and he has mentioned in his book the synergy of microfinance fighting fighting poverty beyond microcredit he explains who are the poor so in his talk he in his book he is mentioning that poverty is hunger poverty is those people who are don't have shelter poverty is being sick and not to, you know able to see a doctor poverty is not having a job poverty is fear Forty is one day at a time, living one day at a time. Forty is losing a child to illness about by unclear water. Forty is powerlessness. Forty is lack of representation and freedom. Similarly, Professor Millington Friedman has also told that forty poor people sit poor not because they are lazy, because they don't have capital. Professor Amrita Sen, the Nobel laureate of 1998, he also you know talked about what forty is actually. It is actually lack of capability. and similarly the nobel laureate professor shortus in 1990 1933 he also explains that the economics of being poor it is because he have mentioned and briefly explained that people are poor because of you know having health issues then he is further explaining that what do we mean by health issues he is telling if a people are having sound health it means they are having good sanitation they are having good income they are having good food and so on therefore you know highlighting these issues what is the you know fundamental reason to highlighting these issues to understand who are the poor and why they are poor so let me you know come to the you know main questions of the talk what are the important you know reasons to discuss this talk the fundamental you know questions which i have asked before you know which are motivating of this study that how inclusive is recent financial inclusion schemes among the two urban poor groups are slums and beggars from the two cities of lucknow and kolkata then i will also check that whether the recent financial inclusion schemes with respect to india are they having any you know significant impact on socio economic conditions of these you know urban poor groups so these are the you know main fundamental questions to answer by studying this study so let me you know again speak about you know some issues of poverty 
who are the poor and what are the miseries of these poor for the you know socio economic conditions if we discuss socio economic conditions they are the very basis of human development and human development is now the Sorry, sorry for the inquiry. Bulan-bulan tiba-tiba enam bulan atau satu tahun kemudian datang kami tentang. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I have muted. I think everyone. there is some disturbance in background. May I continue? Hello. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. Sorry, sorry. Please continue. But the you have to mute, ma'am. Mute Satya Uttama sir. Yeah. Actually, you know, socio-economic conditions are a very basis for the human development, and socio-economic conditions are so policies in India. We are having the you know, latest policies from 1947, you know, for the cover of poverty. We are policies for the you know improvement of employment. We are policies to. give good standard of living to the people we are policies in which we are you know prescribing or initiating water facilities to the people we are having policies which are you know providing electricity and food security to the people but there are you know tremendous policies from 1947 if we see if you you know look at the indian economy we have so many numerous programs for the welfare and development of the poor people but still you know poor people what they are missing they are missing the health services they are missing the education they are missing the you know banking participation and so on the then prime minister of india rajiv gandhi once told that why poverty you know still you know in uh, persists in india he told that if we you know spend 1 rupee of the public fund for the development of the welfare of these people poor people only 50 paisa in one rupee is reaching to the general public so this argument by the then prime minister is explaining why poverty still you know persists actually programs are there actually investment are, is there we have policies but these policies are not working at grassroots level for the welfare of the people so that is known as the corruption so keeping all this background there what are the conditions of the people in india uh, with respect to the people uh, with respect to the poverty now i will you know come to the man man crack man this man city i will discuss some you know past cities about slums and beggars what is their you know background how their socio economic conditions are so therefore i will first discuss about you know beggars the begging is you know an uh, an activity which is you know in most of the globe it is you know known as you know illegal activity it is banned but some of the you know countries in south asia it is legal it is not legal but people are practicing it so it is an alarming condition that begging begging is increasing day by day beggars are becoming victims of you know so many violations sexual harassment abuse police torture and so on beggars are facing you know the, uh, the challenges to live a sustainable life they are having you know poor hygiene poor health poor earnings and ill trade beggars are the people who are asking for their food beggars are the known as most vulnerable sections of the society so the fundamental cause of begging are there are so many causes some people are losing their property some are losing their houses some are losing their you know dear ones due to which they are coming into the begging the emerging and increasing cause nowadays is old age people who are you know becoming old age and their their sons and daughters and are lefting them you know shifting them toward outside the home they are not taking care of them so the old age people they are you know forced to shift their houses and they come into the practice which is the you know very bad practice that is you know begging similarly we have strategies about this yeah about slums slum people are facing also you know challenges in their life they are having issues in malnutrition they don't have you know good health good food lack of you know sustainable income they are having mismatch of income and expenditure they are illiterate people their housing condition is very worst 
and they are facing also the challenges of you know having good occupation they are having challenges of you know uh, participation in public institutions they are mostly unemployed and ill trait so occupation is one of the you know they are having poor occupations in india so now these are the you know some of the you know field uh, uh, pictures which, which shows the miseries or living conditions of these you know slums and beggars now let me you know explain some you know brief descriptive statistics what is the you know socio economic conditions of these urban poor people so here i will discuss about you know slums actually our country, our city is focused on financial inclusion so i have made this cross analysis of you know this pmjdy account pmjdy account i will you know briefly explain to the global audience that it was an you know scheme financial scheme initiated by the government of india since 2014 it was a banking service given to the poor people free of cost at zero free of cost and the main target of this scheme was to make to include poor people into the financial system so therefore first objective i we will see that how this banking service is you know affecting the socio economic status of the people so if we look at the age wise of the slums there are you know three ages adult population old age so only 31% in old adult population are having the bank account the rest 68% don't have similarly in old people 20 20.34% people have you know accessed this bank account which is free of cost so 79% people don't have so what we conclude from the first table that settle more than you know more than 70% people don't have bank account with respect to their slums similarly if we talk about you know gender wise differences how gender wise the bank account access of bank account is so in male 22% have you know accessed the bank account which is free of cost and in gender it is 31.68 it is a, actually a great finding that 31.63 people of uh, females are having you know bank account which is you know an improvement the gender is you know doing uh, there is a great improvement against the female the why this is why there is a you know big improvement how it is possible actually there are studies they are saying that women are very weak they are you know deprived than male but the answer to this question is that this scheme was targeting that the the objective of this scheme is that to target at least one woman in a household to provide this banking free of free banking facility at least government was trying to have one household that should be particularly women that is why women are you know having here you know greater uh, improvement or greater access than male so similarly we will see cost cost is actually a you know a determining factor in india we describe so many things so cost in general in general population 60 16.28 percent people who are having banking access and in schedule cost of 40 percent and in schedule type 50 and obc 40. so if we see here you know general is having you know less access in comparison to the all minority costs that is why because this game was targeting to the poorest of the poor that is why the poor people are having you know a lead than the general population and similarly if we see education in education illiterate people are having excess of 31.85% and people who have education up to primary to fifth level they are having 18% similarly upper primary 16% and secondary which is having you know bigger figures 47% people are having banking excess the higher the education you know it goes you know decreasing it is decreasing that 16.67 and for diploma holders it is 20% at graduate so here again arises the question it is it means that higher the education lesser the bank account so this this question is you know very serious question that if we see these figures the higher the education is the lesser the account is the answer to this question is actually poor people among the poor people the uh, educated 
people or the people who are educated they are less, very less in percentage so the people are very less in percentage they are having access almost to those people who are in you know edu- who are educated they are having access but the population most of the population is illiterate so that is why illiterate figures are so high similarly the occupation there are few occupations the agriculture laborers people who are working in agriculture labor they are having access of 33.33 33.33 you know per set of banking account similarly self uh, employment uh, agriculture you know people they are having 40 14.71 percent access casual labor 27 salary 35 so here if we see the better the occupation the better the access which is defined by salaried class So similarly, income-wise, what is the income-wise status of the you know excess of PMJDY account? So here the middle income that forty uh, people who are having annual income forty one thousand to sixty thousand rupees, they are having twelve point twelve percent you know excess of bank account, and people who are having sixty one thousand to one lakh they are having thirty percent of banking excess. So uh, the higher the income, again, if you see at the table income table, the higher the income, the higher the excess. People who are having more than one leg of the you know income per year, they are having 32 percent banking excess. Similarly, the housing condition is those people who are living in hut, those people who are having semi paka houses, those people who are having paka houses, those people who are having you know living in hut, they are having more excess rather than semi people and paka. Similarly, the drinking water facility people who are living in the houses they are having 37 point 14 percent of the you know uh, access, and those people who are having common tab they are having you know 21 percent access. So, fewer these are the you know other parameters. Let me you know skip it, not to bore the audience about this. Let us discuss. I have you know. <coughs> I have made two hypotheses that banking access and socio-economic status of slums is a you know they are they are determined by that the better the socio-economic conditions, the better will be the access. When I have tested the hypothesis, I have actually examined thirteen uh, variables whether you know they are playing any significant role in having banking access or not. The first one is that I have made the hypothesis that. Education is no role against the poor people to have a banking, you know, account. But our hypothesis has been, you know, rejected. Our hypothesis has been rejected that it shows that education is have a significant role in having a bank account. Similarly, the red three, if you see red three, you know, boxes, occupation, persons with disability, and assets of the householders. So due to you know poor occupation among these poor people. Occupation doesn't play any significant role to have a bank account. Similarly, the persons who are uh, having disability, it it didn't discriminate people to have a bank account, and assets of the household uh, didn't show any you know significant improvement of having bank account. Rest of the key variables: education, income, type of house, drinking water facility, electricity, type of fuel, and toilet facility. They are playing significant role in having a bank account. Similarly, the socio-economic status and variables which I have examined to develop the socio-economic index. So I will, you know, come uh, directly to the socio-economic index. In this, I have, we have, you know, we have analyzed 13 variables to see what is the socio-economic index of these people. First, we have, you know, measured the actual value and the minimum value of the people, then maximum value and the min- minimum value of the people. So the scoring range goes here within the 13 variables from one to seven. So the lowest score was you know one, and the highest score was seven. So the lowest score means the worst condition, and the highest score tends from one to you know towards the higher figure means they are having better socio-economic status. After calculating this, you know socio-economic index, uh, which I have you know used the Uh, methodology of this UN development UNICEF which they are you know developing multi develop multi dimensional poverty index i have used the same methodology as a core paper and i have you know uh, taken the figures as they have mentioned in the method 
methodology. Then I have taken the mean average of the, all the 13 variables. So lastly, what I have got from this index, I have seen the socio overall socio-economic index of slum dwellers records 57 percent. Similarly, we find the socio-economic status is better in the actually it is a city of two cities. So Lucknow is doing better in comparison to Calcutta. The gender distribution of socio-economic index shows that female are having better access than male. So the age-wise, we have found the socio-economic status, it is better in adult population and then followed by old age and the very lowest was found in young age. Similarly, the cost, one of the determining factor in India, it shows that scheduled tribes is having better socio-economic index and which is followed by this OBC, the general population, then OBC. So lower cost are doing better in having you know good socio-economic status then you know education as a key variable which defines which is you know one of the basis of the human development education shows that people who are having secondary education they are having better better socio-economic you know status than graduate people then primary then illiterate so it means that education plays a good role having the better socio-economic status occupation actually these people are you know engaged with the occupations which are not you know too much good occupations they are engaged as a casual labor agriculture labor and so on but <clears throat> the occupation the socio-economic category wise the socio-economic condition shows that 0.69 percent people are having you know the occupation defined as the socio-economic condition self-employed are having you know better or uh, socio-economic status than followed by salaried people and so on income one of the you know core indicators of socio-economic condition it has again showed those people who are having higher incomes they are having better socio-economic status and so on similarly after you know calculating this socio-economic index i have run one regression model to see is there any statistical you know significance is it showing any statistical you know, improvement over having the bank account once I have, you know, used this uh, regression model in which our dependent variable is that socio-economic status, it is defined by, you know, banking access. The banking access variable here is, it is dichotomous in nature. One means having bank account and two means does not having bank account. So this, the interpretation of this model shows that, yes, there is a significant improvement in the socio-economic conditions of the people which is defined by 0.55% and it also shows that opening of one account in the poor people it defines their 0.061 two times their socio-economic status. So the model, the if we you know try to try to you know conclude this model it shows yes socio-economic conditions this uh, financial access having bank account explains socio-economic conditions positively and it has a significant role. But there arises a question, is opening a bank account ha a define socio-economic conditions? It is a research question that is opening a bank account merely explains the socio-economic conditions? So this question, you know, came to the, my mind. I have then, you know, further uh, explored my study. I will uh, answer it in the next model. So after this i have you know i have tried to you know check the what is financial inclusion and financial literacy among these people so there are three parameters of financial literacy and financial inclusion one is financial attitude then is financial behavior and financial knowledge in financial attitude uh, parameter i have asked three questions which are you know based on the likert scale to know how much people are aware and how they are dealing with the you know finance so here I have asked three questions. So the results of this uh, financial attitude, it shows that 0.98% 0 0 people among both the cities are irrational. They don't have any basic sense, common sense about financial attitude. So similarly, there is no differences found across age, cost, education and income with respect to these poor people. 
they are very indifferent there is not any difference between you know education doesn't play any significant role neither cost neither neither age nor their income they are totally irrational about this financial literature similarly demographic variables didn't show any differences people don't have any sense to deal with risks and uncertainty so to conclude the financial attitude people are having very poor knowledge their behavior is totally very poor similarly then the next you know domain next variable fundamental variable of financial inclusion and financial literacy that is financial behavior here we have asked four question and then we have you know normalize it by calculating minimum and maximum so i will go directly to the you know results the financial behavior has been recorded 2.06 the regional understanding of financial behavior in lakhnow is 2% and in it is almost the same there is you know in decimal is there is difference so if what it shows that nine again 98% people have shown irrational financial behavior because of the poverty they don't have any understanding about financial products how to deal how to manage money and so on so the findings are that gender wise there is again you know a little difference that you know male population they are having better you know understanding 2.082 and while the female female are a better and male are 2.05 similarly in ages the, there are three age groups young adult and old age the range you know lies between 2.075% to 2.10 so cost wise there is again you know if you see all the figures they are you know in between 2.10 to 2.11 and rest 98% is missing so again if we conclude that the variable socio economic variables whether it is age whether it is education whether it is income it hardly matters in case of these urban poor to have you know financial behavior so we can say their financial behavior is very poor they don't have any understanding about financial product similarly the last variable yes similarly the fundamental one of the fundamental variable income income determines that people if they have income how they are managing the 41000 60000 people those people who are coming in this income group they are showing their financial behavior 2.12% and people who are having income annually 10000 to 20000 there is 2.045% so again if you see the figures are very less but the higher the income more the you know good financial behavior 2.12 is a better if we you know compare it is although very less among 100% it is 2.12 but if we compare this population it is better so therefore if we conclude if we conclude it is a very complex phenomena of understanding financial behavior of these poor people especially slums your our result shows that the better the income the better the financial behavior similarly the financial knowledge here we have asked six questions to try to the understanding of these urban poor people about financial knowledge so financial knowledge is very weak among the slums it has recorded 0.2 so it means 99. Uh, 99.8 percent people are irrational about this financial knowledge they are lacking they don't have concepts of basic bank account they don't have you know concepts of insurance credit insurance provident fund financial knowledge is found indifferent between the socio economic conditions socio economic variables no any socio economic variable is playing any significant role with respect to these problems so lastly i have you know compile it try to you know what is the financial literacy overall financial literacy of these people <coughs> so here we found that these uh, the, the you know compiling all the three variables financial attitude financial behavior and financial knowledge we find that 0.68% people are having financial they are financially literate well which means that 0.32% are irrational in financial behavior 
So we can we conclude that both the regions they are having weak understanding of financial literacy. So lastly, you know, I here I have again developed the second regression model. We have now two two group of you know information. One is social economic condition. The second was the financial inclusion. Here I run again the regression model to check whether this bank account is playing a significant role to define the socio economic conditions. And the results are the results are no. That having a bank account is not you know playing any significant role in having you know better socio economic condition. Therefore, you know it is again you know cross questioning the first model of our regression model. because it shows in our in our first model it was showing that 50% of socio economic conditions is explained by having bank account so here it is showing you know reverse that there is not any significant impact of having a bank account so those populations whose uh, their socio economic condition is defined by bank account maybe they with they are having better education better income and better occupation So actually, this financial inclusion is not mere having a bank account. It's a name of bunch of services. We should have a credit. We should have a dealing of saving accounts. We should have a you know lending. We should use other you know ATM. We should have use other digital gadgets. We should know financially everything. So bank account here we are again you know arguing that it is not a you know reliable thing to justify the. social economic conditions of these people now with the findings and conclusion of the study we shows that socio economic status and determination of financial inclusion among slums in lucknow and kolkata found us that excess of bank account male 50 59.21% while female 40% so similarly age so i have discussed all these things that you know the fundamental key variables which are determining the Social economic as well as you know financial access of the people. So. Yeah, I will I will focus here. You know some fundamental variables that after constructing this social economic condition, a social economic uh, index showing that impact of financial schemes. as you know we run the regression model that this pradhan mantri jandan yojana have significant 0.1 level of significance which claims that there is a positive impact of socio economic condition but it is not true in case you know if we generalize that financial inclusion is explained uh, wholly and solely by jandan account as i have argued that this financial inclusion is name of the group of various services which are missing against to this you know population so only after constructing this you know financial index this behavior attitude most of the people are very illiterate about financial attitude financial behavior and financial knowledge so we have cross checked the regression model where we found that these people are not financially inclusive and neither their you know socio economic condition is so much improved so so with this talk i conclude that if anybody is having any query regarding you know regarding the talk thank you we have a question is it dr ravi all right yeah but well, thank you uh, it was very interesting and uh, informative talk mr firdaus ahmed malik and now we will give a chance to the panelists and if any one of the audience has a question regarding the topic uh please raise hand button okay just uh, uh, press uh, raise hand button anybody has a question can you just any listener who has a question for dr pida shall we start the discussion with the panelists then yes okay um Yeah. ma'am my name is dr rudresh pande uh, i have uh, one question here uh, uh, dr firdos uh, uh, would you like to give any suggestions in the situation which we are in right now in the poorest of poor 
uh, what a uh, what is your view on on this situation thank you sir uh, should i answer it or i have to hear more question uh, you can answer yeah thank you it is very interesting question that uh, what should be done to you know do something special to these poor people so actually i have quoted at the beginning of my presentation i have quoted two noble laureates and one the great economist of the world bank professor vinod uh, b naik they are focusing that we should not you know give any you know subsidies or money or donations if you see across the world what is happening towards these poor people some rich people are coming they are giving donations they are giving food them they are giving money them also to reaching back to the you know their houses and so on but it is not you know they it is it, it is a, you know time being help they need you know full time help they so professor amrita sen the nobel laureate and the professor shall does they were focusing that we should not give them money we should try to make them capable so that they can earn so that their socio economic condition should be better so with respect to you know if we try to you know make a policy frame how to help these poor people we should adopt them we should to them adopt to them then make them capable give them you know suitable workers you know maintain their bank accounts put them money which they are earning put them in their accounts and later it will you know it will develop they uh, we need their all round development we don't only need their money we don't give them money or you know our temporary helpers we need their you know overall development their education should be better their health should be better they should earn their they should have a good occupation and so on hope i have answered your question sir thank you sir thank you very much Yeah, Dr. Fidas, I'm Dr. Daisy from School yeah. Management in Malaysia, Malaysia. I just would like to give my comment. Uh, just now you actually talked about that more than seventy percent of the people they do not have the bank account. So uh, I wonder what could be the reason. I mean, uh, could it be the access to the ATM and also? the bank is very limited for the rural areas because your focus is mainly for the people who live in slums and also beggars so i would assume that they live most of them are living in rural areas and if they are living in rural areas it also it means that they may not have the access to the ATM machine and also to the bank because i think most of these facilities are available in the town in the city i have some in the rulers but not many so i would foresee that this could be one of the reason why people in slums and also beggars they do not have the uh, access to the uh, facilities that's why they don't have the bank account that could be one of the reason and this is from my point of view and also another thing is uh, usually uh, those people who are living in slums are very poor and uh, and they may not have a lot of cash in hand and they would see that there is not a need for them to even have a bank account i mean these are the two reasons that i see why many people they don't have the bank account maybe you disagree with me dr fidas i would like to hear from your view yeah thanks yeah ma'am N- nice question actually you know ma'am my city is the sudan urban areas these slums are living in urban cities and the beggars are you know my city is mostly focused on urban areas <laughs> the existing literature shows us that people in the rural areas don't have access to banking account because the richness towards the banks is far away and these people are unbankable this is a very debate was there that these poor people are unbankable they cannot you know handle or manage their bank account that is why they are out of their banking but if you see the model of you know this professor mohammed yunis how he have started he have made so many beggars millions of beggars he have made you know self independent and they became some of them become you know business entrepreneurs so therefore you know claiming that poor people are not able to you know handle the banking services 
but there is perception within the banking you know institution the perception is that these people are you know not worth towards the banking services so we should not provide them banking you know because it costs us banking giving banking services it costs us so these people are unable to you know bring that you know uh, cope of that cost but they these poor people have time and again showed that they are bankable bankable and they are you know maintaining the discipline banking discipline they are you know paying their loans and so on but here the question is why these poor people who are living in urban areas are settle out of banking because because uh, if we talk you know uh, at the global uh, you know global juncture they are unbankable because they are financially illiterate they don't have you know reliable sources of income continuous sources of income their occupation is very poor their financial literacy is very you know less but in case of india the recent financial inclusion scheme they are directly targeting these you know populations and they are giving them free banking account they are be, be giving them you know loans free of cost but again there is you know in the the the, the fault in the system is corruption people are not you know believing the banking officials are not you know giving them loans or giving them services they are seeing that if we provide them loans to the poor people we are not you know certain whether they will pay or not so they are you know looking towards their towards their promotions officials are always you know looking at their job promotions they will do better performance in an institution they will get more promotion if they will try to make experiment to lend credit to these populations so they are thinking that we will lose the job so what they are doing and there are schemes there are policies in india that we should guarantee you know loans or annuities to these poor people so that they should become you know well uh, well citizens so yeah, their uh, development should you know come mm-hmm. these officials they are you know having their greed you know paying loans to the rich people and so the npa the npa is very high in india the rich people they are you know becoming defaulters of the loans the more needy people are the poor because the poor if the poor will be, you know become sick they need money to go for the doctor but here is you know the system is against the poor people the system is giving loan to the well of the section those people who are having those people who are getting good income those people who are having good savings so it is you know it is there is default in the you know system itself thank you how oh, i have answered your question ma'am yeah can we discuss on the uh, remedial uh, measures with respect to this from the panelist i would like to hear more about this and i would like no. to add something to this uh, what uh, mr pedos has said uh, yes. if you are talking about that loans are provided to rich people alone or mostly to rich people and you are also saying that uh, loans are available for these poor people as well want to take into account the habits of these people living in slum areas where they get money and then uh, they are having habits of such habits which are actually erasing their money and the big biggest challenge of our country that is of population want to take that into consideration it is not the system that is corrupt uh, it is not the system alone that is corrupt and because of that uh, this is all happening you have i think you should take into account the other challenges as well what would like what would you like to say about this yeah ma'am it is nice question and a nice query actually these populations are you know they are totally excluded population and we are talking with respect to financial inclusion the definition of financial inclusion is those people who are out of banking who should provide them banking services very ease very comfortable and very minimal cost and the pradhan mantri you know jandan yojana the fundamental objective of that scheme was to provide free of cost to banking account so that these you know these excluded population should be included and we should develop their behavior so that they can save they can take money if they need so my argument was here that these people are they very needy those you know actually it is a, if we see a common logic that who needs money money needs those people who don't have money so these people are more deserving to get money whether they are getting donations on the road 
they are getting you know food on the road so why they are getting they are forced to get because they have to feed themselves yes there are questions that they are very poor they are you know consuming their you know income in bad things such as alcohol or gambling so these are the, you know these are the secondary things first we have to see why they are poor people and if we see so many programs in my you know first part of my presentation i have explained we have lot of programs so you know to welfare these poor people but these you know these programs are not reaching to these poor people you know holy and solely so my argument is here that if government is providing them free of cost account if government is announcing that we can give them credit without mortgage it is not enough we should we should make them self independent we should we should create jobs for them we should create them self independent so that they can you know they can themselves save money so that they can themselves earn money so that they can better become a better citizen they can have a better education so i will you know finish my quote <coughs> last year. hope i will you know answer your question by quoting my you know my slide lastly hope i have answered your half question ma'am um yeah. okay. um, let's uh, take uh, the opinion of dr aujit uh, about this uh, please uh, sir you can speak up now dr aujit can i ask a question from me yeah def- definitely yes okay Who would like to speak up? I just yes. wanted Dr. Aujit to just okay. throw some light on this. Are you there, Dr. Aujit? Okay, Dr. Tokok Ban, would you like to just speak something on this? May I in- interview Dr. Ajay Masood? All right. I yeah. have some query. Please, please. please. So first of all I congratulate uh, Dr Firdos for an extensive study in Lucknow and Kolkata uh, my some of the queries is uh, uh, you must have uh, adopted a questionnaire method so you must have gone to the slums and would have asked this questionnaire so is it questionnaire was given to the entire family or just one person from the family just one person from the family sir one person that means entire family doesn't have bank account no sir i have not asked it that because uh, initially when pradhan mantri jandhan yojana started it, it its initiative is to cover the every household and not the every individual so government data shows that today they have almost uh, th- more than 35 crore people have jandhan account and along with that they have given uh, uh, insurance scheme like bima yojana is there and atal pension yojana is there so yeah yeah Uh, maybe in that sense your result are uh, different than what maybe government claims and uh, another issue is what kind of uh, difficulty you face because they may not know uh, hindi or english language or like how you communicated and how did you fill the questionnaire yeah so it is a nice query actually you know yeah uh, should i answer sir or you have to ask it more yeah yeah please yeah so the first uh, you know for most important question which you have raised that government is showing the figures very high that we are having uh, we are having 98% bank account to the population which government is you know showing but in the field it is you know missing yeah the main objective of this janman account was hello yeah yeah please yeah, go yeah. i am listening yeah, i am getting echo i am getting echo I am listening my uh, you know voice again, my seller. So is there any you know error from your side or maybe yeah. others will have to mute for a while, okay? When he is uh, in the yeah. discussion. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it is clear now. So <clears throat> yes, the target of this Pradhan Mantri Jandan Yojana account was that at least we should provide banking account at least to. one household particularly to a woman in a household their target was at least a minimum to give one account in a family minimum but 
that minimum was again targeted to a woman yeah my field was you know in when i went to the field i have asked that whether you have a bank account in the family there are families who are having you know more than one account but <clears throat> there are families who are having one more than one account my my strategy was you know individual based secretary it was not household based so the data which i have collected it was 300 samples 150 from you know lucknow and 150 from beggar i am talking about those 300 samples what is their you know exact position how much their you know, bank access is yes there are gaps and the gaps i have talked with the you know some of the bank managers i have you know made the interviews for the banking officials uh, in different places both in lucknow and kolkata i told them so many you know questions that if government is showing that we are having 98% people bank account under jandan yojana account so why these people don't have account then they again told us that we have you know provided them this facility to have a bank account but these accounts became dormant accounts we cannot manage these accounts uh, without having any you know savings in them so we have 98% popul accounts uh, showing on record but these all accounts are not you know functional and many poor people who don't have bank account they are lacking the documents like aadhar card like election card these people are actually you know migrate people they don't have proper documents to open the bank account again inside this pradhan mantri janadan yojana it was you know mentioned if people don't have these you know documents to open the bank account this gated officer give them you know this a certificate to open the account but which has not happened in the you know in the system so that is why major you know sections of the poor people they are without bank account hope i have answered sir yes hello Yeah, thank you. Hello. Yes, sir. I am hearing you. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah, this is Dr. Abhijit Bakshi. Yeah, yes, since the uh, uh, topic is on that uh, microfinance and economy, yes. so uh, do you think that uh, that especially after the COVID, this uh, microfinance uh, has any role, significant role in? Uh, reducing that uh, problem of that beggars and those who are uh, staying in the slum areas how they can uh, play their role in reducing this poverty they have any is their role the, all these microfinance institutions number 1 second question is regarding to that bank account do you think that only that a bank account uh, is sufficient enough to reduce the poverty because until and unless they don't have the flow of income there is no point of having a bank account so that uh, flow of income or continuity of income that should ensured at first to reduce the poverty when yes. when they have an income then only the bank account is required until if we cannot ensure that flow of income what is the purpose of having a bank account on yes, so uh, these two uh, are my questions let me answer your sir second question in my you know in my strategy i have explained your question i think you have missed i will explain it again i have run two regression models in first regression model i have shown that bank account is playing a significant role in the improvement of socio economic condition then i have raised this question is it possible that a mere having a bank account can have such a significant role such a significant impact on socio economic condition in the later second model i have again you know cross checked it it is showing no bank account is not a fundamental variable to decide socio economic status so yes the answer to your question is no bank account is not a suitable and full fledged product to play any significant role then i have asked that having a bank account doesn't mean that these people are better because financial inclusion itself talks about so many things it talks about people should have savings it talks about people should have income it talks about people should get at the times of emergencies at the times of risks of life like accidents disease they should get credit which is totally missing 
it also talks about that people should use ATM accounts, people should, you know, lend money, borrow money, get easy money, easy access. So, which is totally missing. So, here, bank account is not worth to judge socio-economic development of these people. But the question is, the second question of yours is, sir, that is there uh, any significant role of micro small medium enterprise this microfinance institutions to play a significant role to help these poor people as covid covid 19 crisis are there yes <clears throat> micro finance has a history a history of playing a significant role by helping the poor people to become you know self sufficient self independent and capable so if you see you know the history of you know, microfinance in india self help groups group lending uh, or, or you know giving small loans to the needy people as per their capability and capacity as per their needs for example for example if a poor person needs loan he needs loan for food he needs loan 10 rupee loan to go to a doctor for you know to get a paracetamol and so on so these small loans will matter and I, I am, you know, I am enough confident that microfinance is having a positive role to come. As you know, if we see these donations are coming from the people, the rich people are giving donations, they are giving money. So microfinance can also, you know, help these people and they can become, you know, self-sufficient. But although there are challenges, there is, you know, concept of social distance, but once the, you know, this lockdown will open, life will become normal. Yes, microfinance is having a significant and important role to come and to help the poor. But the, microfinance, uh, but the microfinance institutions are facing now problem, tight problem because of the liquidity, especially after that uh, COVID uh, crisis. They have a liquidity crisis as well as they have an asset quality crisis also because many of them, those who have borrowed money, they could not uh, repay their money on time, especially uh, after COVID. So, uh, yes. so it is a strain on their liquidity as well as the asset quality of the micro. micro. I want to focus more on the microfinance since the topic is on microfinance. Yes, so sir. I uh, want to more emphasize on that microfinance institution. Uh, there are you know problems if you see a whole the banking institution in India it is in crisis. There are so many NPAs and uh, and so on. But I am telling you you know actually whole economy is in the crisis as RBI governor yesterday told that. The GDP growth rate may touch negative figures. So it is all uncertain, but I am telling you, yes, there is a hope once, you know, this lockdown will, you know, improve, this life will improve, so they can, you know, play a significant role. These, these days, these poor people are in crisis, they are, you know, living on the roads, they are living on the food, where they reach donations and so on, so many organizations and NGOs are helping them. But microfinance as a banking institution can, you know, give them credit, make their life, you know, suitable. It will, you know, it is an examination and it is an experiment. It is again a question from my side, how sustainably they can, you know, challenge this, you know, crisis. That is a question, but my hope, my prediction is that they will do, you know, good. They will do better after this COVID-19. Is Thank there any sir. moratorium of loan it is offered? Yes, sir. Is there any moratorium of uh, the loans it is offered by the microfinance institutions? To the I'm not getting... yeah, I yes, am... uh, RBI has offered for three months a moratorium loan and then again it has extended for next three months. But those who are ready to repay back in time, so they also can go with the repayment. That option is no. given to RBI. No, is it applied for the microfinance institutions or it yes. is only for banks? Uh, it's regulated microfinance institutions only, not the unregulated, but regulatory institutions. Okay. Okay, then. And there is uh, one more question, uh, Firdos. Uh, it's from Tan Peng uh, Hui, sir. Is asymmetric information an issue for bank to link to these from dwellers? Uh, this is a very important question. Yeah, that happens actually, you know. That have to. That is very true. Asymmetric information plays a you know significant role by lending the you know credit to these poor people. So asymmetric information plays a significant role whether to judge their you know clients, customers. It is very beautiful question, and yes, it is there. It exists in the system. Hope the answer is done. Uh, let's more hear from other panelists as well. Uh, please, uh, anybody would like to throw some more light? 
Let us find out what are the remedial measures in this scenario. Okay. Hi. Uh, hello. Yeah. Uh, hi. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sergos, for the sharing. I'm Dr. Mm -hmm. Pio. I would like to ask, based on the regression model that you have shown, that actually you are using like, uh, the bank account accessibility to measure the SEI, Social Economic Index, isn't it? So, but based on the demographic uh, that you showed us with the graph, that actually majority of the respondents, they do not have the access to the bank account. Therefore, if we use that, uh, uh, the, con uh, the concern of bank account accessibility to measure the social economic index, would it be like not so accurate while there is actually any other variable that can be considered in order to measure this SEI? Yeah, actually, SEI, yeah. yeah. Can you, sir, repeat uh, you know, your question more again? Can you repeat? My, yeah. My, my question is that uh, because since we, uh, it has been shown that uh, in SEI uh, that uh, you use the bank account accessibility to actually to measure the SEI of the uh, poor and also the backers. So, uh, but based on what you have shown us, the data, that actually the accessibility uh, among the respondent, they, they are actually not able to really access to the bank account. Am, am I right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So based on this, uh, if we want to measure SEI through the bank account accessibility, my, my, uh, may, maybe it is not so accurate in terms of the finding because they don't really possess a bank account. So we might not know the effect on the bank account towards the SEI of the people in slum and also the beggars. Yeah. So, uh, would you consider that uh, the result might not so be accurate, as well as maybe there are actually other factors to take into consideration of the SEI of the poor and also the beggars? Yeah, your question is very, you know, genuine question. It is very good question. Again, so actually, you know, I have given a brief description of, you know, demographic variables. There are 13 variables All right. which are showing their socioeconomic status. The objective of this the objective of this study was to check whether there is any improvement in their socioeconomic condition by opening a bank account. Okay. All right. So, yeah. But I have again, I this you know, Professor, this Abhijit sir has asked the question that is this bank account solely responsible having you know socioeconomic condition or development of socioeconomic condition? As you are sir asking that, is it accurate? Mm -hmm. So it is not accurate. There are other financial products which should be, you know, in there uh, to check whether there is any improvement or whether it is explaining the social economic condition. But as these are poor people, we have taken this variable, having a bank account as a proxy variable. I we see. have tried to represent it as a financial inclusion of these beggars. We thought those people who are having bank account, they are better than those who don't have bank account. There are other services. We have kept it later. Let us later discuss these services. Let us see those people who are part of the banking. Yeah. Yeah, your question is, you know, good question that it is not too much accurate. All right. To estimate to analyze their socioeconomic condition, which I have answered. Hope I have answered your question, sir. Yeah, uh, thank you. So uh, I think it will be very interesting if we actually include like other predictors in order to predict yeah the social economic index among the people in slum and also the beggars. Yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. I have one more study in which I am you know more mm. focusing on excess of you know banking among slum oh. and beggars. So that is my other study. It was you know a minor objective and minor study. I have here focused on only. The, with respect to financial inclusion and socioeconomic concerns. My other, you know, study is access of the, there. I have asked, you know, bunch of about bunch of services, access of bunch of various services like pension schemes, like saving account, uh -huh. like insurance. That yeah. is the other study. Yeah, yes. here it is a narrow. We cannot, you know, justify whole on the bank account. Yeah, sure. So, thank you very much. Time. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Um, Dr. Desi Ki, would you like to throw some light? Dr. Garima, would you like to speak something? Hello. I am yeah, um, would you like to speak? Yeah, I got one question. 
Hi, Dr. Pyre. Based on the discussion this morning, I will mention about women's supporter in the So, are you suggesting the government interventions to help develop knowledge of the poor on financial literacy? I I am sorry, ma'am. I didn't you know hear you well. Uh, hello. How about now? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, so based on Doctor Prado's discussion just now, normally the slum and daughter they have uh no enough knowledge on the financial. So, are you suggesting the government interventions to help develop the knowledge of the poor on the financial literacy? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Actually, yeah, yeah. That that is again a good question. That the government should you know come with the programs to you know initiate uh, awareness about you know financial literacy and other financial products. Actually, we have in India so many you know programs uh, from the you know banking institutions which are focused on to have financial uh, literacy, awareness of financial literacy and financial inclusion. But my, you know, my point here is that government should reach these poor people, especially these poor. They should target these poor locations like slums and beggars. They should address them directly. They should not, you know, go to the general public and tell, you know, and then highlight that we are awareing the people. They should directly target these locations where they are set, uh, settled. They should go there. They should, you know. Uh, they should make them aware about these things. Again, here you know, question is, giving awareness about anything is not you know a justification so that they can you know get improvement in their life. Here the question is that why they are poor. So if we finish post to the poverty, their banking will be also you know well. So if we address, for example, I will address you about physics. I will address you about technology. So you will have awareness, but that awareness is of no use of you, yours. So we should have awareness based on participation, so that people should participate. Thank you. Hope I have answered your question. Thank you. Uh, Miss Sarah, uh, Dr. Fidals, I just noticed there is one question raised by the audience. Uh, this is from uh, Margaret. So I would like to just give my comments on the yeah, questions. Yeah. Uh, Margaret actually asked, can poverty be avoided by providing educations and also financial literacy? I strongly believe uh, from my perspective that uh, by having educations and the knowledge about financial literacy, um, poverty to some extent can be addressed. So uh, I also believe that if the Indian government can do something with the educations and you no know, giving uh, because I believe that uh, we we already are aware that uh, slums and beggars they they need help and this uh, even for the people that in the low income they really need help so I believe some effort must be given so uh, educations and we if we want to actually encourage them to come out from the poverty there must be some actions taken so uh, for example by giving them free educations i do not know how actually it can be done but it can be from the ngo it can be from the uh, private organizations that who can provide support or some form of aids to this group of people that who need help so we can actually provide free educations to the kids and also some financial, some knowledge on the financial literacy so that they know the importance of saving. They know the importance of, uh, you know, how how to see, uh, you know, the money and and, and uh, the, the importance of saving the money for the future. Yeah, that's from my side. Yeah, thanks. And uh, Dr. Fidals, um, actually I will... I uh, would like to ask one question because your topic is about the COVID-19 challenges of the financial inclusions, Dr. Fidals. So yeah. I would like to know um, how do the government actually reach to this group of people, to the slum and also to the beggar in 
in this crisis because I believe that with the lockdown, with the restrictions of movement, so that uh, even you explain in the slide just now in your presentations that there are people who die in hunger, they lost income because of the lockdown, and uh, they have e even you know the some of them actually actually die of hunger. So what is the actions from the government to help this group of people? during the crisis of uh, COVID-19. Thanks, Dr. Fidals. Maybe you can uh, enlighten us on this issue. Thanks. Yeah, actually, it is, again, an important question. The crisis or global crisis are there. How people should reach them? There are, you know, from government side, there are so many, you know, announcements. And one announcement in India here is that they will, you know, provide some, you know, loans to the micro small business you know, entrepreneurs so that they can run businesses to have investment and so on. But especially these poor people who are registered, who are having, you know, Russian card, means that uh, those who are getting the subsidies, government have given, you know, free of cost to them these food items uh, for three months and government has given them cooking gas. So again, here question arises, those Sulamus who don't have, you know, these Russian cards, Russian cards mean is those who are getting, you know, food subsidies, food okay. items are they are getting from public, you know, uh, public institutions. They are getting food and other, you know, essentials of the life free of cost for three months. So it differs between, you know, regions. They, as India is a big country, mm -hmm. in different, different, you know, somewhere they are giving rice, somewhere they are giving this, this cereals and other essentials. But these essentials are not although sufficient. They are not sufficient, but government is, you know, trying to feed these people. But again, here is question that how to, you know, take this, how to help them in such a problem. Government should come forward with a, you know, special uh, policy framework to these people. As you know, as I have mentioned again and again, mm -hmm. as rich people are coming with donations in their vehicles, they are feeding them, they are giving them aid. Government should similarly, you know, come to the societies so that take care of their food, so that take care of their health and all. But there are crises where people are making distances from beggars. These days beggars are not getting money on the road because it is locked down. So their earning is totally set up. So it is yeah. the responsibility of the government to come directly to these locations to talk, find where are these people, poor people, and try to feed them. So in these crises, they can, you know, do like this. But it is again a difficult challenge for the government as the virus is very pandemic. It is spreading here and there. So within the precautions, government can, you know, do some sustainable setups so that to feed these people so that they can live at least these crises. Thank you. Uh, I want and to ask one question. This is Dr. Abhijit. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you think that uh, the direct bank transfer uh, it will be very useful uh, in this situation to help all those slum uh, research people? Because uh, what uh, the, through the financial uh, reform program, whatever measures they have taken, it is mostly the loans or the credit they are offering uh, to the MSMEs or to other <laughs> But uh, now the question of continuity of income. If your income is continued, then only we think about taking some loans and all. So do you think that only providing that loan it is sufficient enough, or there is uh, additional uh, measures like the direct bank transfer? It should be much more useful for the poor people. Yeah, actually, there is one setup from the government of India that those people who are having the Jandan account, they have been given rupees five hundred, uh, you know, per month as a direct you know, transfer. But again, here question is, most of the population whom I am talking about, only 30% people are having banking access. So by doing direct transfer, 70% people are still missing. So direct transfer is one of the you know best alternative to feed the 30%. But again, for 70%, they have to arrange something special to you know, generate their income. And again, 500 rupees uh, for a month is not a sufficient amount. Yeah. Because, because due to this pandemic, this uh, health expenditures has increased. People need sanitation. People need hygienic. 
people need medicine they said this is not daily routine you know thing so therefore i i suggested that this is not you know too much uh, to this credit is not too much or this money is not sufficient for them to live live uh, you know daily life thank you sir So anyone would like to add up something? Yeah, there is one more question. Can I answer, ma'am? There yeah, yeah, please. There is in chat box one question that yeah. Levani Sharma. Hope I have you know spell it right. Levani Sharma. How financial inclusion reduces poverty, income, and inequality? <clears throat> Actually, financial inclusion is you know name of bunch of financial service. Financial inclusion means that people. Who have income, they have opened their bank account. People ha- uh, having a bank account, they are saving. People are using other financial services like, like getting credit from the bank, saving in the bank, having you know, uh, using this uh, Paytm, ATM, and all online you know, uh, gadgets. So therefore, it also sounds that if you. you are having you know bank account and all these services it means you are you know you, you are sustainable you you are you are you know uh, you are developed you are having certain sort of life so those people who are having financial inclusion the, the poverty itself reduces they are you know they can invest they can you know earn good money and so on so therefore financial inclusion is first means of you know development which you know which decline is the inequality and there are so many studies which has shown that the those people who are sound in income they have you know less poverty and less inequality hope i have answered this so there is one more question what future policy is needed to increase financial inclusion for women in poor slum areas that are severely impacted by covid-19 again i will quote professor amrita then that we should make people capable so that they can earn so let i think i think to answer this question and to answer the part of the garima ma'am's question let me show my last slide it is a chinese quote give a man fish and you will feed him for a day teach a man to fish and you will feed him for a lifetime so simple donations and simple help giving money for a day feeding feeding a beggar feeding a slum for a day or for a month is not you know a good justification we should teach teach them how they can become self independent how can they can earn hope i have answered this question so any more question okay thank you very much for answering my question hi dr fardas yes ma'am can you hear me yeah yeah Yeah, uh, just wonder. I have a doubt. Uh, since a majority of the uh poor and also the beggars, they are not able to access their bank account. So I wonder, uh, how's their living condition now? I mean, due to COVID nineteen impact. So since they couldn't really benefit much from the banking account, so how they actually living now, and what actually support them to have a better social economy status? as i hope i have heard your question i will part uh, answer your first part the second part i think i have missing your second part i did you know here well the first okay. part is that these people don't have you know 100% bank account so mm-hmm. how they are getting help how yeah. they are you know how these days how you know in this pandemic how they are you know living yeah so actually here so many ngos non government organizations and local public who are well off they are making communities and they are feeding the poor people they are giving donations and in india there are crores of funds generated by the general public in the you know prime minister's care fund they have given so much money to fight this covid 19 but besides this people as a civil society they are coming forward they are trying to feed these poor and needy people but again the question is 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 that you know help reaching to all the poor Mm-hmm. the answer is no so these people are you know they are living in you know bad miseries they are you know dying due to illness they are dying due to hunger 
so but most people are you know trying to help them so mm. these people are living from out to hand so during this you know covid 19 crisis mm. they are in in a real crisis they are bad crisis but some help is doing by the society So lastly, I want to tell one thing. Thank you, Doctor. Can I tell one thing? Yes. Lastly, yes, uh, sir. Can I tell something? Lastly, yes, yes. Yeah, sir. please. Yeah. Please. Uh, there is a hundred days program that is going on. That is currently going on. Uh, the implementation of hundred days program uh, more rigorously, and it might be if it can be increased to two hundred days program. That is, I am talking about the NREGA program. that yeah. might solve this problem to uh, a significant way so ensuring that 200 days work would all those people uh, might solve this problem but no actually, actually i think this question is not you know this suggestion is not too much relevant as this 100 you know uh, job guarantee scheme it is you know implemented for rural areas but my population is living in urban areas this is slum standard but yes government can you know have such type of programs in you know to tackle the poverty issue within urban areas also also but the narega program 100 days job guarantee is for rural areas so therefore it is not having any you know any significant impact uh, towards this urban population but yes government can make a policy to adopt uh, these poor people and uh, under you know different you know occupations are different you know schemes that yeah, it is a good concern but we can shift this you know uh, this policy to the urban urban area also thank you sir thank you sir so is there any more question sir hello yeah any anybody would like to ask maybe another 2 minutes we can give um in the other question okay dr firdas my name is ayub sir i'm in the chat i got no more well in here uh, you didn't uh, really give a program about the role of uh, digital technology and i would like to know if in india there is some program that use the uh, financial literacy or inclusion using the digital uh, technology platform Because in Indonesia is a uh, very rapid uh, to increase financial inclusion in the areas. Yeah, I think some background sound. Yeah, I have heard your question that how what is the role of digital technology is you know digital technology playing a significant role in India or not? So hope I have you know listened the question well. Yes, <clears throat> for general public people are well, you know, engaged in you know digital gadgets, and they are using digital technology for banking and other financial services. But these more people, as there is a report from this World Bank, that in Asia the poor people are living below the dollar of one point fourteen per day. So they are here struggling with their you know daily life. they are living from hand to mouth what are they are earning they are eating and so they are not part of banking fully so to use this you know digital technology they should post to be you know they should post to have a good income only then they can use you know digital technology digital technology needs you know investment they need a you know android phone they need a you know simple phone at least of 1500 rupees so they need first to phone they need then same they then their question there comes a question that they should financially aware and financial education should be there and it has been seen that there are you know there are crises that people are getting phone calls normal general public are getting phone calls and hackers are hacking their accounts and taking their you know handsome money so it is very hard for these poor people who can save or are saving and they are using this digital technology then some unknown people are taking them you know in confidence that i am calling from the bank and you know violating them you know taking their money looting their money from their bank accounts so again it is a you know it is, there will be a you know great 
great challenge to these people to make them, you know, include uh, digital technology because people are, you know, people are making, you know, gambling of these or, you know, thefting their money from their bank accounts by asking. So these people should get all round development. One is they are all round development, one is their health is, you know, sound, one is they are having good income, one is they are having good occupation. Then only there, you know, comes the question of digitalization. Yeah, for general, you know, pop, you know, population, there is digitalization. There are again challenges of digitalization in India because India is a country of rural, rural economy where 80 percent people are living in rural areas. We have infrastructure problem. We have internet problem in the rural areas. So digital technology is a great concept and it is spreading all over, the, all across the world. But still, from the government side, they need, you know, improvement, they need, you know, uh, infrastructure to give the good services. And again, then time and time again, we should, you know, aware people about these frauds, about the challenges. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, is there anybody having any more questions? So I think there is no question. Yeah. Can we end the talk? So yeah. I will I will finish my this you know presentation by showing one more slide. So now okay. the question arises: What is the contribution of our study? How will this study add us to the world of the scientific knowledge, and how it is helpful for the policy makers and general public? This study is the first to hand investigation to check the excess of financial inclusion schemes in India. So the city contributed that ultra-urban poor does not need institutional participation for granted. They need products. They need products suitable for them as per their capabilities. Banking participation of poor does not work until and unless we have policies and programs which guarantees to collapse, finish the problem of poverty and make all-round development in all spheres of life among the poorest of the poor. So again, I will go to the last quote. It is a Chinese quote. You cannot help a people for one day to feed him one day to make him a good gesture. I have feed the poor people, thousands of poor people. I have given donations and so on. That will not help to tackle the poverty. We should teach them. We should educate them. We should, you know, make them self-independent. With this talk, I am very thankful again to the panel and the participants having patience, and I ho hope. I have made, you know, justice for the talk and I have made the sense. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Fidaus, for your nice presentations and it's wonderful to hear from you uh, regarding your inputs for all the questions. Thank you, Dr. Fidaus. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, let us conclude today. The conclusion of uh, today's webinar is it is not just the bank access, but the bunch of services which makes the bottom line of the segment of the society sustainable and government has come up with uh, so many measures and of course microfinance is a remedy in this situation which can provide the loans and simultaneously make them financially capable and of course um, as a um, uh, keynote speaker addressed lastly that uh, uh, urban poor they need the products so robust policies and programs from the government uh, would be a measure in this direction it is abundantly clear that uh, combating the COVID-19 uh, in urban slums will uh, take more uh, concentrated efforts and uh, uh, expose a large uh, section of the urban public uh, families to keep uh, impoverishment. Uh, so with this hope, uh, uh, let's uh, thank the keynote speaker once again. Uh, and um, finally, uh, AIBPM talks with Dr. Firdos uh, has come to an end. It was very exciting and interesting talk. Thank you, AIBPM, for having me, and thanks to all the panelists that have followed the webinar until the very end. Okay, I would love to see you again in the next webinar, which is uh, 2020 AIBPM talks with uh, Rajesh Kumar Nair from SIS College of Management Studies on June 18. Okay, I'm Anushrikini. Thank you for your attention. I think. Uh, Thank you, ma'am. I, 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 yeah. Yeah. Actually, I have a small query. All of you, please, you know, open your video so that we can have a group photo. So it is my small request to all of you.
so every participant please on your you know video so that we can make a you know so actually i am very you know obs obsessed towards these selfies and photographs so i wish to make a group photo so most people are not opening are you you know hearing me well please open your video so that we can have a group photo till then i must congratulate to you dr fidoz you defended well you presented well very good please share the photograph also with us sir yes it's very much required <laughs> Yeah, I will share, but you know, most of the you know participants are not opening their video. I again request you, please, on your video so that we can have a good photo. Because two, three people are opening, so it is not making a good sense to have a photograph. So I request all participants, if they are hearing me well, please open on your video so that we can have a group photo. you can also take photographs from there and uh, we are waiting please do it quickly only two people have opened their video so i think these people are not interesting so okay thank you very much thank you dr sagaros thank you for the great sharing thank, thank you, you thank you everyone thank you all the panelists Participants. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Can 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 Thank you. See you. Thank, Thank you. you. See you guys. Thank you for attending the bye. webinar. Bye. Bye. Have a great day, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 bye.